So one thing that became abundantly clear as I began coaching more older guys over the past few years, I'm coaching guys in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even some guys in their 70s, is that half the older guys think the dating game is impossible and they can't imagine a younger woman ever being attracted to them. The other 50% of the older guys realize that it's never been easier for them to meet high quality, very often younger women and are loving life right now. And no, it's not because of money. So I sat down and I analyzed what were the biggest differences between the older guys killing it in dating, guys who have more women than they can handle chasing them, and the guys who are struggling. And I identified five things that separate these two groups of men. And that's what I'm gonna reveal in this video. Hi, I'm Bobby Rio, and in this video, I want to discuss five mistakes that older guys make that hurt their chances with women, especially younger women, and the big differences between the older guys who do really well versus the guys who don't. And I mentioned earlier, it has very little to do with money. Now, I'm not going to bullshit you. Money opens up opportunities. If you are too broke to go to get out of the house, you're gonna struggle, right? But I think most guys have an inflated sense of what type of money women expect you to have. As long as you're self-sufficient and you have your shit together, that's usually good enough. So let's get into the real difference makers. And we're gonna start off with something that is very mindset based. And this is the idea of who is the prize. Now, this is something that affects younger guys as well. But when it comes to older guys, what I found is that older guys really struggle with this when they're interested in younger women. And the reason they struggle is because they have this imagination that, you know, we talk about the pedestal, putting women up on a pedestal, and a guy who's in his 40s, 50s, 60s, and he's interested in a younger woman, he automatically puts her up on the pedestal and he gives her all of the status, all of the power he assumes because she's younger and has options and looks extremely attractive and he feels older and maybe he came out of a relationship where now he's rusty and he's, you know, he's been, it's been a while since he's had a great time with a woman and he automatically begins looking up to her. And when he does this, that's the vibe that he creates around her. And she immediately picks up on this, right? Women automatically can pick up on if you're giving them all the power, if you see them as being above you. And I always say a woman, the minute she realizes that you're looking up at her, she begins looking down at you. Now, why is this an issue for older men and why do some older men do really well with this? Well, it all comes down to this idea of who is the prize. And what the successful older guys figured out is that they have a lot to offer. And women have been conditioned, right, for hundreds of years. I mean, if you date back all the way into the Middle Ages, women have conditioned to believe that older guys are attractive. If you look at the older guys that are positioned as movie stars, you know, the older guys that are on the cover of, you know, magazines, these are generally, you know, guys quite a bit older than them. So even when they were growing up, right, it was like, who did they have a crush on? Their older brother's friends, right? Women have this instinct that the older guy has the status. But for some reason, as we age ourselves, we begin to forget that. And we begin to go, oh wait, she's got the status. But the guys that really understand that they do have power, when you're an older guy and you've had experience and you're mature, you've got your shit together, right? You've learned things about the world, you have opinions, that in and of itself is something that you can offer a woman that she's not getting from guys her own age. And when, you're, when you understand that and you embrace it and you meet a woman and you don't take on the role of, I need to impress you, you take on the role of, you need to impress me. That's when she begins seeing you as the prize. And it's those guys that do extremely well when they have that single belief of, I'm the prize. I don't need to impress you. I don't need to grovel to you. Now, the other group of guys, what they do generally is they make their age weird, right? They project a weirdness around it because they're insecure about it. So when they meet a woman 
they kind of make excuses, they make jokes, they make comments, oh, I'm too old. And it's like they continually bring this to her attention as if it's, you know, they might be being making self-deprecating jokes, but when you do this, you're projecting insecurity around this. And when you do that, the woman actually begins to mirror that. It's like whatever we're feeling, if we feel like the prize, if we feel like we're this confident, you know, mature sexual being, the person that we're with, the woman that we're with is gonna pick up on that. On the other hand, if we feel insecure, if we feel like we have nothing to offer, and we feel weird that we're we're this older guy and, and we're talking to this younger woman, she's gonna pick up on that too. So you always wanna project that you are the prize and you really have to begin to believe it. And there's a lot of reasons to believe it, right? Especially, like I said, if you do have your shit together, if you are successful, and, and like I said, successful doesn't mean you have to be making you know millions of dollars a year. It just means you have to have your things, your, your stuff together, right? Because most guys don't have their stuff together. So just having your shit together puts you in the upper echelon. Now we're gonna, the next one is a little bit more technique based. And this is something I call breaking rapport. And what I mean by that is a mistake that a lot of older guys, when I start working with an older guy, um, especially an older guy interested in a younger woman, a mistake that I continually run into is the older guy comes along he meets a woman, maybe it's a coworker of his. I've had guys who they start talking to their, you know, their dance instructor or, you know, they go to, they, they take some class or they're in CrossFit and there's a younger woman at CrossFit. And in order to get into a conversation with the woman, the guy kind of takes on a role of being her mentor or her friend. And that's fine to a degree, but at some point you have to break that. And what happens is, the guys don't ever move things from that platonic friendly level to that flirtatious level. And then they do get pigeonholed as the mentor. So if your dance instructor and you are flirting, but you're continually giving her business advice, at some point, you have to actually like drop the business advice and stick to the flirting or else you're gonna kind of get pigeonholed into that role as her mentor. And when you're in that role, the difficulty is that if a woman has a really good mentor, she doesn't want to ruin it. And she's going to resist moving forward with you because she's going to like, well, this guy's been really helpful for me. Now, if I, if I move things forward with him, if I kiss him and then it doesn't work out, I'm going to lose that. So you want to quickly shift gears. So if you start off in helping her out with something, you got to then flirt with her. You got to then escalate. You got to then break that rapport. You can't be scared of going, well, if I show interest in her, then uh, she's not going to want to talk to me anymore. Because here's the thing. If your interest is not platonic, there's no point in hiding that forever, right? You may not necessarily want to start with that. Like you don't need to go into and be very direct about your interest. But if you're talking to her and you're becoming attracted to her, I, you know, as I cover in other videos, you got to move from friendly to flirty. And you do that with comments, with compliments, with something as simple as, you know, taking her hand and walking her somewhere where you initiate some physical contact that shows that, hey, I'm, this isn't a completely platonic interest that I have in you. Okay, so the next mistake that guys make, and this is one of the reasons that I say that, uh, and, and, I, and I coach a lot of guys that, that are very wealthy, and people think, oh, having money makes it so easy, but I can tell you from 12 years of experience doing this, that guys with money struggle just as much as guys without money. And one of the reasons is this idea of buying affection. And what happens is, as a successful guy, he, he has this mindset, and partly it comes from the mindset that she's the prize. And he goes, well, she's the prize, what do I have to offer? And he goes, well, the only thing I really have to offer her is my money. So he begins going overboard with giving her gifts taking her to really expensive restaurants and trying to impress her with his money and his, you know, his um, connections and stuff like that. The problem with that is a couple fold. One is it reinforces the mentality that she's the prize and you're trying to impress her. The next issue with that is that she can sense that you're trying to buy her and it's an ugly feeling for a woman. When, when you know, when she's dating an older guy, right, there's that stereotype, like I'm after him for his money 
money, people think that. And when you start doing that, you're kind of triggering that in her where she's like, is he trying to buy me? And she's gonna resist it. So that's another, you know, that's one reason you don't wanna do it. Another reason you don't wanna do it is because too many guys rely on that. The reality is what you have to offer a woman as an older guy is your knowledge, your experience, your certainty about the world, your maturity. And if all you think you have is gifts, you're not gonna be using any of that, right? You're gonna be trying to compensate for not being funny, not being playful, not being sexual with, well, I took her to this really nice expensive restaurant or I bought her this new piece of jewelry, she should like me for that. Well, it doesn't work that way. And if it does work that way, it's a woman you don't want. If all you're offering a woman is material things and material experiences, and you know you're not being the fun, flirty guy, well, you're attracting the wrong type of woman. You're attracting a woman who does, that's all she wants from you. And also the relationship begins to become transactional. So if you're always paying for things with her or giving her money, or sometimes I've had older guys come to me and they're like, you know, Bobby, I've been helping her out with her mortgage payment. And for them, that money doesn't really mean much, right? Maybe for you, it's like, well, I gave her $2,000 to help her with her rent this month. Well, the minute you do that, even though in your mind, you're like, it was only $2,000, it's not that big of a deal. For her, it's a big deal, right? That $2,000 is a lot of money. And the minute you give it to her, now your relationship is no longer a man and a woman on a mutual ground. It's now transactional, which makes it very weird for her. So you want to really avoid trying to buy a woman's affection. So the next issue that men fall into is failing tests. So if you're not familiar with tests, I have other videos that cover this idea that women are always testing us. They're testing us because they want to kind of feel us out. They want to know our true personality. They want to know if we're putting on an act because guys are really good at putting on acts. We can pretend to be confident. We could pretend to be cool, but it's like, she knows that so she'll deliberately do things or say things to try to rattle you and with older guys this is really 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 important because a younger woman when she's with an older guy she kind of doesn't know right is this a cool older guy or is this like a creepy older guy and well i'll give you an example of, of something a younger woman might do right so a younger woman might bait you by saying something sexual because the creepy older guy is going to jump on it right he's going to be like a you know a, a, like a, a, a guy who hasn't eaten in years and he's going to immediately jump at that meat like she might you know make a comment about sex and he's going to go oh, blah, blah, and she's going to see it in his eyes where like, this guy is not used to being with a younger woman he's like way too creepy about it right whereas a mature older guy if a, a younger woman makes like sort of a sexual comment he's going to be very relaxed about it he's not gonna like it's not gonna rattle him she's not gonna notice that he's overly excited or he's chomping at the bits right it could be a comment about your age right she may make a comment like how old are you anyway and if you're insecure about it that insecurity will come out and you'll start going well I'm not just I look young and you're gonna start explaining yourself whereas the mature older guy is just gonna be like oh he's gonna say his age and he's gonna like make or, or he'll make a comment like old enough to not answer that question and he's gonna move on right he's not gonna he's not gonna like get all off balance right that's what she's checking can i make this guy off balance because if he really is that high status cool older guy he's not going to get off balance really fast so when you're with a younger woman you always have to remember this right if she makes a joke about creepy older guys don't fall for it right just make a joke back be like well, how about those creepy younger women right don't defend yourself because the minute you're like defending yourself you're showing her that like you're not really comfortable because if you were comfortable, those comments wouldn't bother you. And women are gonna give you those comments. I mean, I've been with my woman for years and I still get those comments. It's just how they're wired. They wanna like, they wanna push your button and you have to be aware of this because here's the deal and this is why some older guys do really well. There's two ways to look at these tests. One way is, why do women test me? This is so annoying. I have to always be on guard. But when you're aware that it's happening, it's really like a shortcut to creating attraction. Because if a woman makes a comment about, you know, it's just going back to the creepy older guy and you just go, hey, I'm, I'm tired of these creepy younger women. And you're just totally like cool about it. You've just demonstrated a very high status quality to her. Same thing if, you know, she does something like makes a comment that tries to bait you into 
licking your chomps, you know, when she says something sexual, but then you just come across really mature about it, that makes you more attractive. So instead of worrying like, oh no, these women are testing me, this is such a annoying and I hate this, go, hey, this is great because every time she tests me, she's lobbing me a softball and I can hit it out of the park and boost that attraction level because I know how to handle it. And most guys don't know how to handle it. I can tell you that because I deal with guys and they explain situations and they tell me she said this and I did this or I read a text message that she sent and he responded. I'm like, she was just totally testing you and you failed miserably. So the final sort of mistake or difference maker is nice guy behavior. And this really happens a lot when an older guy gets out of a long-term relationship. And when he's in this relationship, a lot of times his wife or his girlfriend is going to make comments to him. You never tell me you love me. You never buy me flowers. You work too much. You do this, you know, and she's saying all these things and she probably means them. But what he doesn't realize is that he's been with her for years and she's voicing her frustration with the relationship. Okay. But when he meets a new woman and he meets her, he's got all these things in his head that his wife of you know 20 years had been saying to him. So now he meets this new woman, usually, like I said, a younger woman, and he goes, well, my wife got upset that I never bought her flowers. So he immediately starts you know, giving her gifts and buying her flowers. And my wife told me that I never tell her how I feel. So two weeks into dating a woman, he's telling her that he loves her because he thinks, well, that's, that's what women want, right? My wife said it and she divorced me and it's because I wasn't doing these things. Or my wife said I work too much, so he he begins slacking off at work, making this new woman the priority of his life. And women don't want to be the priority of your life. You know, a younger woman, part of her attraction is your ambition, your like, you know, your maturity, the fact that you've got your own things going on. And then all of a sudden she sees like, wait a minute, I came along and he's just totally forgotten about everything else. And he's giving all his attention to me. You lose some of that value that you had in her eyes. Other ways that this nice guy behavior affects older guys is when it comes to making a move. So we talked a little earlier that guys are afraid to break rapport. You know, they're having a good conversation. Conversation. And I can't tell you how many older clients that I've coached where they're like telling me of this date that they went on and they're like, well, I, I took the, I went out with this girl and she came back to my house and we had a glass of wine. And then I, you know, I gave her a kiss on the cheek good night because I wanted to be a gentleman. And then she came over again two days later and I didn't make a move because I wanted to show her that, you know, I'm not only about sex. And it's like, well, really what you're, you're doing is you're coming across like you're scared Right? That's what nice guys do is like they're scared to make a move and they wind up ruining the attraction. A woman, I always say, is that a woman expects things to happen fast when there's chemistry. So if she goes out with you three times and you don't make a move, she backward rationalizes like, well, there just must not be any chemistry there. We must not have a connection. That's why he hasn't done anything. And just like the nice guys, no matter how old you are, you lose the woman because of this nice guy behavior. Nice guy behavior is not making a move. It's kissing her butt, pretending to be interested in things that you're not interested in because you think it's getting you points. It's thinking that being a gentleman is something that attracts a woman. Now, being a gentleman is something that I, I, I believe you should do because it's just the right way to be, but it's not attracting a woman. That's the difference, right? If you go into a interaction and you think, well, opening her car door and taking her out is attracting her, that's not. Now, if you're doing those things, but you're also flirting with her and doing all these other things, that those things are fine. But if your whole strategy is, well, I'm gonna get this woman to like me because I'm gonna be the perfect gentleman, she's not gonna like you in the way that you want her to like you, okay? So we talked about a few things in, in this video so far. We talked about this idea that one person is always gonna see the other person as the prize. And when you meet the person, you kind of, there's, there, if you look at it, it's only, I always say there's like two realities clashing and one of those realities is going to, is going to get the, the, the power in the dynamic. It's just human nature, right? It's, you can think it's this manipulation or you can say it's like a, a messed up way of thinking, but it's human nature, right? We all do it. No matter if we're meeting somebody at work or if we're meeting anybody, there's always two realities clashing and one of the realities is going to be a bit stronger. And the older guys who have success, when they meet a younger woman, they don't give her, right? They don't automatically go up. Oh, she gets all the power because she's young and beautiful and I'm old, right? The older guy that has success comes into it and goes, I, like, listen, I've been around, like you're young, you're hot, but what else do you have to offer, right? Like there's a lot of young, attractive women, but what do you have to offer, right? When you take that mentality, your reality overpowers her reality. The second thing we talked about is the idea that 
If you go into an interaction in sort of an indirect way and you offer her help as her mentor or something like that, very quickly, you want to um, do something, make some sort of statement of, of intent. Um, tell her, you know, something about her as sexy, for instance, because that lets her know, okay, this is not just a mentorship. Because the worst thing you want to do is spend a month mentoring her and then all out of the blue, try to make a move because that is kind of weird to her. She's like, was this guy just doing this this whole time because he, he wanted to make a move? So you want to do it fast so she knows the deal. You don't want to try to blindside her a month after you guys have been hanging out as friends. The third thing we talked about is not buying a woman's affection. And the reason, I give three different reasons. One is that it creates a dynamic where she's the prize. It, it makes her feel like you're using your money to get into her pants, which kind of makes her instinctively put the brakes on. It makes the entire relationship transactional. And also it subconsciously makes you think, I don't have to do these other things because I'm taking her to a fancy dinner. So I don't have to be funny. I don't have to be flirty. I don't have to generate attraction because you know my money's doing it for me. So you want to avoid that. We talked about how women are always testing us and the guys that do really well with women, they're, I don't, whether they're aware of it or they're just, they're just not affected by it, they pass these tests. And if you're a guy who has been affected when a woman makes a comment about your age or makes a joke about you being the creepy old guy or or she does something that like makes a sexual comment and you like lose your composure, you want to go, okay, this is going to happen. I'm aware of it now. I want to handle it differently. It's, we also talked finally about avoiding nice guy mode where you're just thinking like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be the perfect gentleman and not make a move and I'm going to kiss her butt and that's going to get her attracted to me because that's all the things my wife told me that I never did. That's really the things that make the big difference. Now, if you are struggling and you want to go a little bit further, I have a free class with my friend Hank. Hank is in his uh, mid 50s and he's an absolute beast when it when it comes to dating women. His girlfriend is I think 28 and he figured a lot of stuff out. In fact, a lot of the stuff that I figured out and pass along to my clients is stuff that him and I have discussed. So I got him to do a, a class. It's a free class. I'm going to put a link to it below. It's called How to Turn Your Age into the Ultimate Advantage with Women. And this class walks you through all the things that you have to actually incorporate. We talked a little bit about, you know, I, I spent a lot of time saying you have to always be generating attraction. Well, this class gets into, well, how do you generate attraction with a woman younger than you? What are the instinctive advantages that you have that you want to project more of? So that class, uh, you can find a link to it below. As always, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. If you like it, hit like. If you like it and you're not subscribed, subscribe to the video. And again, anything you want clarification on in the future video, leave a comment below.